guys, my name is Vidhi Kalra Ballana and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. And the topic for today is Metzler Paradox. Trust me guys, when I was a student, I loved studying paradoxes in economics because they are so interesting and they always tend to teach you so many interesting things. So that is what today's topic is going to be about. Just a heads up before I go ahead in the video guys, this paradox is related to the stolper Samuelson theorem and in case you don't know what it is, well I am here to your rescue. I've already made a video on the stolper Samuelson theorem so do check it out, I'll attach its link in the comment section below and in this video I'll be telling you the entire paradox with the help of diagrams, examples but you have to wait till the entire video ends to understand this whole theorem or paradox, whatever you can call it. So yeah, let me get started guys. Also guys, if you haven't, haven't followed me on my Instagram handle, 5 Minute Economics. By the way, we just touched 10,000 uh, followers on Instagram. So please, please do follow us on Instagram as well. And yeah, thank you. So coming to the introduction of this paradox guys. So in the stopper Samuelson theory, it was said that a tariff, when imposed, it hurt the abundant factor and benefited the scarce factor. I know what you know what is abundant and scarce, right? So it hurt the abundant factor and benefited the factor which was scarce. But in 1949, L.A. Metzler, you know, opposed this theorem and he said that tariff intends to improve the terms of trade. In fact, the price of factor which is used intensively in the export sector rose in comparison to the price of factor used intensively in the import substitution sector. He said that when income distribution changes, there is an improvement in the abundant factor against the scarce factor. And this was what he called the Metzler paradox. I've explained this in really brief and I know you're very confused right now. Trust me, when I studied this paradox for the first time, I was just like you. But wait and hold on till I explain you the example after which you will be crystal clear with this paradox. So now coming to the very example which I was talking about after which I'm sure you will understand the paradox very simply. So guys, let us take an example of India where we have, you know, imposed tariffs and on our imports, maybe imports of automobiles. So let me take an, a foreign brand, maybe like a, a Kia, like Kia cars are very famous these days. So Kia is a South Korean brand and we import Kia cars, okay. So initially when there was free trade rights, there was no tariff involved. A car used to cost us 20 lakh rupees, okay. Supposingly, now India, the Indian government has put tariffs and after the tariffs, we see that there is a 20% hike in the price of the car. From 20 lakh, it has reached 24 lakh rupees. So, of course, now it is much more expensive than it was earlier. What happens now, a common layman might actually think that now we will switch to domestic cars. Of course, like, let's take an example of Tata cars. Like, let's take Kia Seltos, Tata Harrier car, somewhat similar, okay, similar range. I, feel, I think okay so domestic cars are now much more attractive because outside the imported cars have this you know tariff imposition so because of this now people will start demanding domestic cars due to which the demand for domestic automobiles will increase and simple demand price relation we all know as the demand has increased so much the price also tends to rise now because because of demand has risen the price has risen now what is the funny thing is that they have become more expensive than the tariff imported automobiles. Now, Tata cars are much more expensive than Kia cars because the demand has suddenly risen. So, one might actually think now that rather than that, people will switch to the imported cars, right, when tariff has been imposed. But now comes the paradox. Well, that is not the case. Due to the increase in demand of automobiles, we see there is economies of scales, efficiency of gains, there is even, you know, increased competition and which reduces the price of the domestic produced automobiles why so because now because there's so much demand these uh, you know tata owners might like switch to increasing their technology innovative technology they might have uh, to negotiate better price for raw materials from the suppliers due to which their price has fallen in comparison to these tariff imposed vehicles so that is what the paradox is all about tariff doesn't always lead to higher domestic prices of course, people think that tariff leads to the higher domestic prices due to which we switch to the imported good, but that is not true. Metzler stated that tariff doesn't lead to higher domestic prices. We see that the pr demand, uh, the price of uh, you know Tata cars is still lower than the price of Kia cars. So now coming to the diagram through which I'll explain you this paradox. 
So guys, you can see on the x-axis, we have the plot. On the y-axis, we have steel. We notice that OV is the offer curve for country B, whereas OA are the offer curves for country A. Okay, I hope you are clear that cloth over here is the exportable commodity, whereas steel is the importable commodity. Okay, there is free trade, that is, there is no tariff involved. And at free trade, we notice that the offer curves of both the countries intersect at this point, P point. I hope you can see this. And at this point, we notice, guys, that we export OQ amount of cloth and import PQ amount of steam. This is a very simple graphically. I don't have to explain anything in detail, okay? After the imposition of tariff, what happens? The offer curve, this OA offer curve shifts to the left and we have a new offer curve, which is OA1. Now what has happened? Trade happens at point P1 rather than point P. Trade happens at point P1. Now what it says that, you know, ta after the, uh, tariff, the terms of trade are favorable to country A. And what it says that the price ratio of cloth to steel is more, is higher after tariff. It means who is benefiting the people or the commodity which is exportable here now in that case is cloth. And who is um, you know benefiting? Labor. Because it is a labor intensive commodity. So tariff benefits the abundant factor which is labor. And labor intensive uh, you know companies like cloth production they are the ones who benefit and who are the ones who lose the scarce factor that is steel over here in our case that is the scarce factor steel industry people lose whereas you know labor abundant um, factories are the ones who benefit after the terms of trade after the imposition of tariff so let me quickly conclude this paradox guys now we realize that imposition of tariff definitely impacts prices and factors of production which lead to a change in the income distribution of these factors of production, okay? So we see that it is much more favorable to the abundant factor, in our case, labor, and it is unfavorable to the scarce factor, which is capital in our case, okay? So this is what the Metzler paradox says. However, guys, the actual impact of tariff is not that easy, how it has been stated. It depends on elasticity of demand, competitiveness of industries, behavior of foreign uh, producers and governments in response to the tariffs. That is all about this video, guys. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, comment in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.